Greetings, it's Andy here. I wanted to do you a short video so that you can see how Touchday works, both on the guest's view, but also in the world you're going to be in, which is updating and managing your information. And the goal of the video is for you to be able to see how things are done and hopefully how easy it is, so that when you go in to start your trial, you feel good about knowing what the capabilities are. So with that, I'm gonna minimize myself. In fact, I'm gonna remove myself so you won't see me anymore, but you'll, you'll still hear me, I'm still here. And what I want to introduce you to is the left-hand side, which is the, the, the portal to which you log in and control your information. And then on the right-hand side here, I've loaded one of the guides related to this account. So it's Beach Retreat, which you can see right here, and that's this guide here in, in the platform. So before I go and show you how the platform works, what I want to do is just orient you quickly with the guest view, which is this one on the right hand side here. Now I've, I've made my screen so that it looks like a mobile phone. And um, on the screen here, and by the way, it's optimized for desktop and for tablet. So although I'm showing you the mobile, it'll look good in the other versions of two. And the reason I'm showing you the mobile is that that's where 80% plus of your guests will access the product. So you've got here a background photo. You can change that to whatever you want. You've got a logo here. This one happens to be a host, but if you have a business or you have a brand and you want to include your brand logo there, then you can easily do that. You just change it. It doesn't have to be a circle. It can be a full wide rectangular logo. There's a bit of free text underneath here, which you can choose to use if you want to. There's a phone number, an email, and there's also WhatsApp, which isn't here, but there is a WhatsApp button you can add to for those of you who prefer your guests to use WhatsApp. You can add all three of these, none of them, one of them, two of them, three of them, up to you. And then underneath here, you've got the place that the guest is staying at, that's the property name, together with the, 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 the address. And if I click on the address, it takes me to the map page where it shows me on the screen where I'm staying and I can hit get directions and it will open up Google Maps and show me how to navigate to that home from wherever I am. If I X out that, um, you'll also see there's a bunch of pins on the map screen. And these are things that you would add using our integration with Google Places. So it's nice and easy. You're not having to manually do lots of things. You're just having to find it in Google and add it. You can also add it manually, by the way. So if something you're recommending does not appear in Google Places, you can still add it manually. And what you have here on the bottom is a tap to filter. Um, so depending on how many things you've put on the map, this list will be larger or smaller. So I could choose restaurants. If I scroll down to restaurants and it will only show me the restaurant pins on the map. And then I can choose one that I particularly want to, to go and visit. So I could say, what's this one here? Click on that. It says it's the chef's warehouse, a little bit of um, information. I could click get directions or I can hit read more and read more takes me into the guide where this one is listed. And you'll see here if I click the information icon that I've got a bunch of information here that is uh, useful for the guests, such as the phone number if they want to call and make a reservation, the address, the reviews, the hours of opening, which update real time. All of this information updates real time because it's linked to Google, assuming the business um, updates their information. And then you also have the map pin, which will take you back to the map, or a website link, which will open up the website. So that's the map. And then if we went back to info here, that's, uh, that's accessed either by clicking info at the bottom of the page, or if you're on the home page and you click get started, that goes to the same spot. And here you have all of the contents of the guidebook. This is um, a... a this is, a, this is a template that's quite similar to the one that you will start with. So when you sign up, we'll start you off with a template, which includes lots of the things that we know most customers would want to add to their guidebook. It doesn't mean you have to use everything we give you. You can delete things, you can add things, you can rename things, you can move stuff around. Um, and this one being a demo guidebook is quite full. It has a lot of information. You don't necessarily need to have this much. And then finally, um, here you've got a search option, and that's really useful if your guest wants to find the answer to something really quickly. They can type in Wi-Fi and then find it, and it takes them to the Wi-Fi section. So how do you control all of this lovely information? Where does it happen? Well, that's what you've got over here on the left-hand side. You've got the login area. So this is where you'll land when you first log in. You'll likely have one guide to start with. I've got two in my account. By the way, if you have... Uh, Tens of guides, 20s, 30s, 100s. We have customers of all sizes here, so you, you can definitely use this. We have many who have got hundreds of homes and it works really well. Um, so you go to Content Hub to update all of your information. And Content Hub is um, 
all of the information that you see in this guidebook. So if I click on info, all of this information here is what you're seeing here on the left hand side. So it says welcome here, quick links before you leave home about us. Welcome, quick links before you leave home about us. Everything you see here on the screen is what your guests will see, including the order in which things are. So if I wanted to move about us further up, watch here, it's in this spot right here. If I wanted to move it, let's say, to the very uh, top above the welcome, and then I go ahead and refresh the guide here, you'll now see that about us is up here in front of welcome. So that drag and drop feature exists all over the place. So you can move stuff around um, as much as you want. Now, if I click on any of these things, so if I was to click on something like arrival instructions, um, and I click on the same thing here on the right hand side on the guest view, if I click on arrival instructions, you'll see it opens up what we call a subcategory. And that subcategory has three things in it. That's what you've got here, a subcategory with three things in it. These three things, are things that you don't have to have. You can delete these things, you can add your own, you can move stuff around. This is simply a demo guidebook giving you a flavor of what you could add. Now if I click on check-in information, it now reveals two what we call topics. And this is where you add your information, so text, photos, links, etc. So if I click on check-in information on the right hand side here, it opens up check-in time and check-in instructions. These are collapsed. Um, you can start with them fully open if you want. Um, and I won't show you how to do that, but that's what you can do. And over here on the left-hand side, check-in time, if I click on check-in time, I have a text box here with all the information I could add. And if I click on check-in time here, here's my information right here. All of this information is just controlled here. And you've got lots of formatting options, bold, italic, underline, heading sizes, I can make my text a different color or a different highlight, I can add bullets, numbers, I can add links to third party websites using this, using this link button here. I can use what's called an internal link. When, when you create an internal link and the guest clicks on it, it jumps to a different section of the guide. You can further personalize your guidebook by adding field codes. I'm not gonna cover this on this call because um, uh, that would require a few more minutes and I want to make this a quick video. Um, and then you've got loads of other things here, usual sort of formatting things. The one I want to draw your attention to is the photo button here. So although you've got a photo at the top of the screen, which we call the main media image, which is controlled right here, and you'll notice it's cropped. So although it's cropped here, over on the, the guest side, it's full view. But this is called the main media image, and that's what you see at the top of the screen. But if you wanted to add photos somewhere else in your text, you can do that. So you can add a photo wherever you want. You just put the cursor where you want to add a photo, click the photo and upload one, and it'll put it in that spot. Now, talking about the main media image, this doesn't have to be a photo. This could be a video too. So I'm going to show you another guide because our demo one does not have a video in it, but I'm going to show you another customer's guide here. This is a real customer called Barbara and Jim, and um, they've included a video in their arrival section, and it shows them how to operate the front door keypad. That's the video. The, the link to the video is the important thing you need if you want to add video into your guide. So I can see the link is up here for this one, so I could just copy that one. But you'll know where your link is when you upload the video to YouTube. It just sits underneath the video. And over here, I can change the media, add new photo from a URL, put my share link in, hit submit, and that will put the video there instead. So that's dead easy to, to add um, stuff to a topic. And remember, a topic is, is this bit of information here. So all you do is you open it up, add your text, do whatever you want with formatting, add your videos and photos, and away you go. It's that simple. So those are the basics. Now there are a couple of other things that, um, well, there are lots of other things, but there are a couple of other things that I wanted to draw your attention to. So there's an add topic button at the end of every subcategory. So I could click on this subcategory and I've got an add topic button. That allows you to do a few other things, such as adding a Google Place. And that's where I showed you earlier the restaurant on the map and I said you could add it using Google Places. All you do is you click on Google Place, you type in the name of the restaurant that you're recommending. So I'm gonna say Pizza Express in Manchester. And you'll see it's powered by Google here, so these results coming from Google. I choose the one I want, it adds it to my guidebook, and I'm done. So that's nice and easy, really, really quick, easy way to add um, stuff to your map. But you can add it manually if you want to. And if you wanted to add it manually, you'd go to Add Topic, you'd add your own topic, 
you'd say something, you'd give the restaurant name, you'd say something about it, you'd add a photo, you could put a pin on the map yourself, etc. But Google Places exists to make that a faster process. There are a couple of special topics, well, a few special topics, in fact. There's a weather widget. This one's already grayed out because the weather widget is already in this guide. And if I head back here and show you it, there it is. You'll see it's a live weather forecast that updates with uh, the, the current conditions, the hourly and the five day forecast. So you add that using the special topic here and you choose weather widget. There's also a tide time widget, which basically does the same, but it updates for tide times. And there are some uh, what we call uh, rating topics. So this allows your, your, you, you to get some ratings from your guests. So you could have a first impressions rating. So you could send that to them when they first arrive and it will ask them to leave their first impressions. Gives you a nice chance to get ahead of any issues if there are any. And there's a generic rating topic which allows you to put a rating of one to five stars anywhere in your guide. So if you had added something new, like you'd added a hot tub and you wanted to know what your guests thought of it, you could drop a rating topic in. So again, not gonna go into that now because that's, um, that's a bit, bit too much information than, than I can cover in a very short video. Now, what I want to do is to cover finally how you then share this with your guests. So you've got all this great information and you've, you've added everything. Now, what do you do with this? So you're gonna go back to your guide on the guides page, um, click on your guide. And then over here on the right hand side, you've got the invite and share option. And the invite and share option allows you to do quite a few things. But the first thing I want to show you is how you get the generic link to your guidebook. So the link that is the same forever. Think of it like um, if you were asked by your guest to send them your website, you would go and grab your website address and you would send it to them. If they ask you for your guidebook, that's what you do except you're not going to wait for them to ask you. You're going to include the guidebook link, which is this one right here, in your emails that go to guests. And that's the quickest way to get this used. So you can just get your quick share link, copy it, and then go and paste it into any of your email templates so that you never have to worry about it again because it's included in the email template. And when you get those sent to your guests, they're done. You don't have to worry about it. So that's called the quick share link. You can also generate a QR code for your quick share link, and that's useful if you want to put a little card, maybe an A5 size card on the coffee table in the home or on the kitchen counter or on the fridge. So you just create a QR code that will give you a QR code and you can drop that into a um, A5 card. Um, and we've got some designs on, on that in our knowledge base. If you go to the knowledge base and you search for QR code designs, you'll find some nice designs which we've done to help you get over that hurdle of creating something. So those are the two easiest ways to get your guests to use it. But you also have what we call Memo. And Memo is, again, a feature that I can't cover in this call because there's, there's, there's too much to cover. But it's a way for you to use TouchDay to automate the sending of emails and or texts to your guests at times that you tell the system to send it with the content that you tell the system to send. So, Classically, somebody might send an email after booking, um, a reminder two weeks out to book restaurant reservations, maybe a text the day before to say, we're excited that you're arriving, a reminder, here's the check-in instructions, and then maybe a text on the morning, again, reminding them where the arrival instructions are. Then maybe something midway through their stay, or even using the first impressions topic that I mentioned to send it to them one day after their stay. So you get the point, you can configure what we call memo to do all of that for you automatically. And that is everything I've got for you. So what I want to do at this stage is to bring myself back and to say thank you very much for watching. I hope you found it useful. And if you've got any questions, we're here to help on support at touchday.com or info at touchday.com. And we hope to see you over at Touchday. Bye.